Yes, the pink hair is back to stay for now. I loved the red, but it just was fading really fast. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. And today I am going to be talking about some of the hard times I have faced in the industry of paranormal by just being me, a girl. So this vlog kinda is close to my heart. It is something that has taken me literally years to write down and develop for you guys. So as pre-paranormal challenge comes from that crystal, no one really cared about her much. You know, I, I loved paranormal, but I was, um, you know, really still in the side of not wanting to be known for it. I just really loved what I did. Paranormal challenge opened up all my doors. You know, I was on several other shows and networks, and you guys know I've been signed to several different series. But, you know, at the end of the day, I had to be true to myself and authentic, and these trials and tribulations that I'm about to share with you guys have made me who I've become today. And maybe by sharing my stories, I can help some of you girls out there that have gone through similar things. I do want to state that I do not want to come off sexist. So the things that I talk about, maybe there are guys out there that have gone through something similar. I'm just talking from my perspective, what I've seen, and what some of my other girlfriends have gone through just by being a girl in this industry. So after I was on Paranormal Challenge, I was invited to basically paranormal conventions all across the United States, and this is where I started to learn about this paranormal hierarchy that I'm going to explain now. So at the very bottom of the pyramid is just your regular Joe Schmo from a small town. They don't really post any of their stuff on social media but they do really love and thoroughly are interested in investigating. The second layer is the YouTubers. Yes, I am a YouTuber now, but I don't consider myself in this category since I have had national um, television time. The YouTubers are just people that have been putting all of their stuff on YouTube for a while. They've never had their own series. They've never actually been featured on a show. They just do YouTube only. The third layer to this pyramid is where I do consider myself, which is the B-list celebrities. So I have been on several different shows. Paranormal Challenge was obviously a full hour that my team was focused on. And this would be other people like Dave Schrader who's been on several different shows here and there as like a guest investigator. Um, Aaron Sager's had a show, but it did fail. It was Paranormal Paparazzi. So he would be in the B-list era. Anyone that's starting to new and come up, kind of like Ghost Brothers or um, Ghost Asylum, they would be considered the B-list celebrities in this industry. The A-list is definitely like Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, uh, even Nick Groff, even Katrina because she was also with Paranormal State. And I would even throw Ryan Buell in that mix because he had his own series for so long. So I'm basically breaking this up into three categories. Paradrama, Parahorrors, and Paranormal Predators. Paradrama is basically what the lower end of the pyramid uses. So people that aren't really well known or people that are just known for YouTube, they like to cut down the competition as much as they can by taking each other out. Sometimes they'll even go after celebrities, sometimes they'll go after B-listers, and it basically turns into high school drama all over again. This is where they start making things up, they start making up rumors, they create clicks within clicks, and then they kind of turn the clicks against each other. It's like kind of an all-out battle war. They will talk crap on social media. Um, they will just try to tear each other down as much as they can. I don't like this because I think we're a small community as it is, and I feel like we should be building each other up rather than tearing each other down. I think there's plenty of room for all of us. A lot of people try to claim that, oh, well, I talked about that person because I'm trying to take out the frauds. That doesn't mean there isn't room for them here still. People will figure out what they're about eventually. People will get it. So you don't really have to tear someone's reputation down 
in order to get yourself ahead. Besides, I feel like that's really bad karma. I feel like I always try to put good out and I receive good back. If you put negative or bad out into the universe, you're gonna get that back. So just remember that. Really try to stay out of the paradrama. I always say that maybe that's why I'm so successful and I'm kind of flying solo is because I don't integrate into the paradrama scene. This is where it starts to roll into something called para whores. And by the way, they can be male or female, but mostly it is girls because the celebrity world is male dominated with men, right? Sometimes these para whores will even sleep with married celebrities in our industry. They will do anything they can to attempt to get their own series. They think by sleeping with a male celebrity, it will get them their own show. They couldn't be further from the truth. I actually have a couple of friends that used to do this. They would try to sleep with guys in our industry that are famous or, or even semi-famous, hoping that it would get them a series. And it got them nowhere. They, they just got a really bad title, obviously, within the community. Keep your integrity. Don't do that. Work hard for what you want. Anything's possible. You can become whatever you want to be if you put the work into it. You not only have to prove yourself, but you have to prove it to the universe. You have to pave your own path. And if you're just trying to sleep with people to get somewhere, it's going to get you nowhere. You will fall really hard flat on your face. Paranormal Predators breaks up into a few separate categories. Men investigators, owners, managers, innkeepers of locations, and definitely psychics and demonologists. I can't tell you how many times I have attempted to network or get along with other male investigators. Sometimes they're YouTubers, sometimes they're working their way up from the bottom, sometimes they're B-listers, and they assume because I'm trying to network with them for paranormal that that means that I'm easy, and that means that I'll sleep with them, or that means that they have approval to get me in the dark while investigating and grope me or talk to me sexually explicitly. I have had innkeepers, managers get me alone while filming and they will attempt to grope me or talk to me explicitly, which is not appropriate. It's passing the boundary of professionalism and it's not okay. I have had innkeepers, managers, owners offer me sex for trade for a location. So they will say, okay, if you wanna come here with your team, I won't charge you the $1,200 if you sleep with me and you can have it three nights for free if you sleep with me. I've also had offers if I date them, if I go on a date with them, or if I become their girlfriend, they will give me full access to this location or they'll allow me to come for free or all that stuff. Or they will allow me to investigate for free any sort of trades like that. I had a manager that I knew for quite some time for a while who made a poor decision to try to get me alone. Then he tried to date me and because I graciously and politely turned him down, he decided to take my email and my phone number and post it onto Craigslist. So because of what I've gone through in this industry and I've heard A-listers and B-listers um, function the same way I do, I don't give my number out to just anybody especially when I'm interviewing, I'll have like a fake number set up so that they can't try to like blackmail me with it. It's really hard to um, get to know people on a personal level too. It's hard to trust people for like friendships and for working relationships because you don't know if those people have ulterior motives, especially guys, like are, they, are you trying to get me alone? Like are you trying to um, make me be in an awkward, uncomfortable situation? So it's really frustrating because even in friendships sometimes when people find out who I am, they just like freak out about it. And I'm like, I really just see myself still as the same me that I've always been. So it makes it frustrating, but I'm only telling you this guys because if you do start to make your way up into the paranormal hierarchy, you have to be careful and you have to watch your own back because no one else is gonna do it for you. The manager publicly posted my phone number and email. I was forced to deactivate both of them and it messed up my Apple ID. I lost all of my purchases of my Apple ID. So I mean, you have to really think ahead in this industry because there's a lot of people that wanna just latch onto you um, to maybe become famous. And it's like you have to weed out who's doing this for the right purposes and who isn't out to, who isn't out to get you, who isn't out to use you. I think most investigators will cringe immediately when they hear someone say, I'm a psychic. Well, what kind of psychic? Because it depends on how developed you are, it depends on how long you've had this gift, 
what kind of psychic? Like, there's audio, there's visual, there's seeing the future, like, there's all kinds of different psychics. There's also psychic versus psychology. I always say, like, don't go into a psychic reading and spill your guts. That's for a psychologist. Because that's when that psychic can read off of you and they get your energy and they're like, oh, this person is like in a dark point of their life. So I'm gonna tell them they have a dark attachment. They can only get rid of it through me with sage and holy water and blah, 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 blah. And you have to come see me every other week in order to get rid of this attachment. And that is how these people that are in it for the really wrong reasons, just trying to get famous, that is how they make money. And so you have to be very, very careful when dealing with psychics. I hate when psychics tell me that I need holy water. I hate when psychics tell me that I need sage or how to use it. What makes you think as an investigator, I don't know how to do spiritual warfare? What makes you think I don't know what I'm doing as far as spiritual warfare goes? I hate when psychics say, let me tell you how you're living your life wrong. That's so wrong. Let me tell you how you're living your life right. You're gonna mess up, okay? Life is not peaches and cream. There's gonna be mountains and molehills that you have to crawl over, but that's gonna build your character. It's not gonna be easy, but it depends on how you deal with the situation is what makes you the person that you are. Don't let a psychic run your life. Psychics coattail you and your career, especially if you're in my category, the B-lister or the A-listers. They are like um, psychic energy that is draining. Just the other day I had an interview with a psychic. I purposely sometimes tell psychics misinformation or even just straight out lies to see how they react to it. If they keep going with it, then that means that they really aren't psychic. They're not intuitive. They don't have like a gut feeling that something isn't right. This psychic started meddling big time in my personal life. So I started really kind of feeding her false information. When you feel that cross the line where your gut, you know, your gut wrench just starts to like kick in, you'll know it when you see a fraud, you'll know it. This girl wanted me to, this psychic that I met wanted me to meet her. And so I wanted to go to a coffee shop because I feel like that's more... Um, a first interview type of thing. She insisted going to dinner, so we did. And I had this real gut feeling she was meddling in my personal life too much. And then at the end of the dinner, she conveniently says that she forgot her debit card and I had to buy dinner. She'd ordered like drinks and an appetizer and dessert and a regular meal. That's another thing, people will take advantage of you when you're an A-lister or a B-lister. Oh, Crystal, you're on YouTube, you have all these followers, you're a paranormal producer, so you have endless amounts of money. So if I can't drain you to get a career out of you, then I'm gonna drain you from your wallet. When I woke up the next day from this girl, she had texted me numerous times and messaged me a ton on my social media like 10 to 20 times on each platform. Not appropriate, it crosses the line with professionalism. Go with your gut instinct. When your gut tells you this isn't right, then put a stop to it, push them away. You're not being mean, you are protecting yourself on your intuitive level. Keep yourself safe in that bubble. So many people are like, oh Crystal, how do I become a demonologist? I wanna be a demonologist. Cringe, cringe, as a seasoned investigator, Two words that make you cringe are psychic and demonology. A demonologist isn't something that you learn overnight. Here's how you become a demonologist. You study for years and years on paranormal investigating. You have good, bad, ugly, painful, emotional interactions with the other side. And one day you wake up and say, I think that I am going to go to the greater of the good. I am going to serve God, whatever, and I'm gonna become a minister or a priest. Once you have done that and you're now serving under the name of God, now that is when your studies begin and your mentorship with someone else in demonology. You do not name yourself a demonologist. The community names you a demonologist. And by that, I mean you have done so much good for the community. When a paranormal group calls you and says, I have a person that's potentially um, needs an exorcism. I have a house that needs an exorcism. I have a house that needs to be blessed. I have a person experiencing an extremely dark demonic attachment. And the amount of people that you help that will give you your word in the community of who you are. You are not in it to make money. You are in it to seriously serve God, serve the higher power, serve people and help them. And then the community says, okay, this person has helped us. This person is a legit demonologist. That is how you become a demonologist. If someone's 25 or even 35 and they're sitting there claiming to be a demonologist, 
you're going to get the biggest eye roll and the senior investigators are going to walk away because they're going to be like, you are not a demonologist. Like it takes years and years and years of studying, of experience, of serving God. Most people that think a demonologist is someone that likes the dark and dabbles with the dark and dabbles with black magic. No, quite opposite, quite opposite. A real demonologist is someone that is very close to God, very close to the other side. So I just wanted to get that clear. When someone says demonologist, be very, very careful. Be very careful because you do not want to get yourself in a bad situation where they become a energy vampire and try to manipulate and steal everything from you. Also, I just wanted to note in this industry, I know I've said it before, but if you make your mental health a priority with meditation, yoga, exercising, even therapy if need be, you will be able to see these phonies walking at you from a mile away, but you have to keep your mind clear. You have to keep yourself in a positive state of mind. You have to protect yourself. I can't just make friends off the street, and it does sound kind of sad, and it does suck, but I have to make sure that people are not using me and that people are understanding what my job is and what I do for a living and that people aren't just trying to use me for my name that I've built in this industry. So please just be very careful and cautious when you start climbing the ladder in this industry. Another little category I wanted to add that I don't really consider to be paranormal predators, but it's something I've ran into over and over as a girl, which is executive producers in the industry. They've asked me to not be so smart. I, I can't know science, I can't know physics, because as a girl, I'm not gonna be respected in this community. As a lead investigator, no, you just can't be because you're a girl. You can't be a camera tech or a cinematographer because you're a girl. I have had executive producers ask me to dye my hair another color to be taken more serious. I've had executive producers ask me to do immoral and ethical things like read from a script and I have a bunch of other examples and I won't do it. I'm not going to do it. Keep your integrity, ladies. We can do this just as much as guys can. And if any guy is experiencing this, I am sorry to you as well. It's not fair. The playing ground should be completely equal. We shouldn't be fighting this the way we are. This industry of paranormal should not be so lopsided and male dominated as it is. I'm not only trying to pave the way for myself, but I'm trying to pave the way for you girls out there, for people that come after me, for all the girls that come after me. I am trying to pave the way for us and I will. What are my experiences in the industry that have actually happened to me? I made a list, and this probably isn't everything, might I add. I've had executive producers to tell me not to sound so smart because it's intimidating. I've had executive producers asking me to color my hair because as a blonde, I will not be taken serious. I have had guy investigators that I've met that have gotten me alone in the dark and they immediately think that I'm gonna jump in the sack with them. I've had guys tell me that they'll protect me from demons and darkness and people and mean people. At what point did you get some sort of transparent comment from me that made you think I was some weak ass girl? I'll protect myself, thank you very much. Psychics that latch on to you, that are dying to blackmail you. If you don't give me a job, I will blackmail you. I live, I've talked about this before, I live in a guarded, gated community. It is guarded and gated 24 seven because of some bad experiences that I have had at paranormal conventions. I had a woman that got so obsessed with me who is a psychic, she wanted me to give her a job so bad. She was mad at me for not going to meet with her to get a reading from her. She started emailing me, she started um, calling my house phone at the time. This is when I lived in Colorado. She was driving by my house. She was sending me threatening letters. She was crazy. And so I had to feel somewhere safe, which is now why I live somewhere that's guarded and gated. I don't want to feel that anymore. I don't want someone to get obsessed with me and scare me that bad where I had to put restraining orders against people because I've had to do that in the past. I have been to paranormal conventions, which do turn into more of a drinking party than anything. So sometimes you'll see who the drinkers and partiers are and then you'll see people that just don't show up and aren't around. That's because they don't like to be around it. I was one of those people that would go out and go around for a little bit and then I would leave. But I did have some be less celebrities that have tried to take me home. They thought I was drunk and wasted and that they could take advantage of me. Don't ever allow that to happen. Don't think that because you're in the dark with me investigating or that because we are out partying that you have the right to put your hand on my ass. I will gouge your eyes out. 
don't think that because I'm a girl and you think I'm smaller than you, then I'm not gonna put up a fight because I will. And girls, you should put up a fight too. Don't ever tolerate someone touching you or talking to you inappropriately. Put your foot down, take a stand, don't fall into it and be strong and say, no, I am not tolerating this. I'm not putting up with this. It wasn't a ghost that moved your arm. You did it with your crappy morals, so don't do it again. Keep your integrity. Most people think that paradrama comes from girls. Nope, it actually comes from the guys. I have more guys that I know on the lower pyramids that are involved in paradrama than I know girls. I don't have time for it. I don't wanna hear it. I don't wanna see that you posted about it on social media. We need to build each other up, not tear each other down. So I don't have time for it. Lead by my example. I don't have time to deal with this stuff because I'm busy trying to pursue my career. And maybe that's why I've become successful at it because I plug my ears and I don't listen to it. I don't care who doesn't like me. I have a friend that's a celebrity and I'm not gonna say who it is. This is what that celebrity told me once and I wanna pass it on to you guys. This is one of my like crystals lessons and like in-depth critical thinking, okay? If you are a public personality like I am, right? And everybody likes you, you're doing something wrong. Think about that. You don't want everyone to like you. There are people out there that do immoral and ethical things. Like, do you think I want satanic worshipers to like me? Not really, don't care if you like me or not. My point is you don't want everyone to like you. And if that means that you're a strong-willed female to put your foot down to dealing with some of this weird drama and abuse that goes on inside of the paranormal community, so be it. Then they don't like you for it. I'd rather be that than be a weak ass. Dick pics. Dick pics. Are you serious? Who said I ever wanted to see that? Who said that me asking you to come ghost hunt with me means I want to see your shit? I don't want to see that. Who said that was attractive? I don't send me those. I don't want to see them. That's going to like totally draw the line in the sand. You did it of professionalism. You want to draw the line and be like, oh, I'm sorry, I just crossed the line. Then you did. Then I don't want anything to do with you. I won't investigate with you. It's inappropriate and gross. Oh my God, gross. I don't want to see that. Who said those were attractive anyway? You seen one, you seen them all. Yes, I have had males get me alone in the dark. Innkeepers have done it. Managers have done it, owners of locations have done it, and so have other investigators. I've had them get me in the dark and they've grabbed one of my body parts. I said it before, I'll gouge your eyes out. <laughs> don't do it, don't do it, it is not okay. Don't do it, and girls don't let it happen, period. And yes, I have had managers ask me to exchange sex and dating and being their girlfriend for a location. Yes, I have had managers come out and ask me for that. No, I have never done it. I have never done anything unethical or immoral. I never will, including reading a script. I have been 100% authentic and I continue to do so and pave my own way. It may take me longer, but I will still do it. Being real, keeping my integrity, and keeping my authentic self. And that feels a lot better in the end, let me tell you. Have you guys, girls or boys, experienced any of the things that I've talked about? I'm sorry that, you know, I don't want you to think that it's it's paranormal. It's not just the paranormal industry. I think every industry's like this. We're seeing it with Harvey Weinstein's coming out, all these women are accusing him. Anyway, I don't wanna get into that, but, but I do think that we have an unfair advantage because the majority of this industry, not only in film, but also in paranormal, is male. Do not tolerate it. Do not lose your integrity. Do not give up. Make sure you guys give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure you guys follow me on social media, and I will catch you guys next time.